It's Jeff Sauer again, and in this lesson, I wanna share with you the five things that every account needs to get the most out of GA4. Now let me start by saying that there are definitely more than five configurations you can do in GA4, but if you wanted to know what I consider to be the 80-20 of Google Analytics, i.e. the 20% of the effort that you can put in to get 80% of the results you seek, then it all comes down to the five techniques I'll be teaching in this video. So, what are the five items that we recommend that you implement in your account right away? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. The first thing I wanna show you is how to set up a data stream and add the code to your site. Data streams are a brand new feature in GA4, so it may take some time to get used to them. But think of a data stream as a source of information for your reports, and this can be from a website or a mobile app, both iOS and Android. Now installing the code on your site works in a similar way to how it did with Universal Google Analytics. Every page on your site needs the code and it's best to set it up through your content management system or CMS, a plugin or Google Tag Manager. Okay, so here we are in Google Analytics and I wanna show you how to set up a data stream. Now there's a few assumptions that I've put into place here and that is you've already created a GA4 property. And if you do create a GA4 property, it will automatically have a data stream in place. Or if you don't have a GA4 property in place, you can click the Create Property button. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a stream. And I do recommend only one web stream per property you're looking at. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like to have a brand new one. So even here, they have a warning to only do one web stream. But when you create an a a stream, it looks like this. And so what I'm gonna do here is instead of going ahead and creating one from scratch, I'm just gonna heed their warning and just show you what I already have in place. So one thing that's really important to look at here is that each web stream has a different tracking ID than what you used to see in Universal Analytics. And now the measurement ID starts with a G instead of with a UA dash. And this is pretty important because that's how you can distinguish between GA4 and Universal Analytics if it has a G in there. Now, for those of you who do not have a plugin or a content management system where you can just copy this ID, what you'll wanna do is you'll go down to configure your tag settings, and then within there, you're gonna look at the installation instructions, and this instructions, it will tell you how to do it with a website builder, or if you wanna manually install it, here's the code you need to put on your site, and there's a little copy button there. So you'll put this onto your site on every single page, and once that is rocking and rolling, you will have data start to come in. Next, you'll want to enable enhanced measurement on your screen, which is a one-click method for collecting all kinds of interesting data for your site. Now before GA4, this level of tracking practically required a PhD to implement. Now, it's just a click away. And so here we are showing you how enhanced measurement works. So on your data stream, you will see an option to check a box for enhanced measurement, and I would highly recommend that you check that box. There's really almost no downside to it, but if you were to uncheck that box, you would see that you're turning off a lot of good opportunities here and you're only tracking page views. When you turn this back on, you have things like scroll tracking, outbound clicks, site search, video engagement, file downloads, and some more. And then if you click at that little gear icon, you can configure what each of these things mean. So if you wanna track what your search engine does, you can look at some settings in here, and there's a few other settings you might wanna pay attention to. Once that's all done, you can save, and you are good to go with enhanced measurement. So this is a very easy click. As I said earlier, it used to require almost a PhD in JavaScript to get this stuff to work. Now it happens automatically with a few clicks inside GA4. Now that your site is sending data to GA4 with enhanced measurement turned on, the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is ensure that your data quality is even stronger by making sure all your links are tagged properly with UTM parameters. While UTMs have been around since Google Analytics 1.0, note that there are a few parameters available for you in GA4 that are brand new. And the best way to get familiar with all the parameters, use Google's official URL builder, which I'm gonna walk you through right now. Okay, so here we are inside Google's official URL builder for Google Analytics. And as you see, we have it for GA4. And you can go in here and you can put in some information. Now I recommend that you put a source, medium, and campaign name to make everything work. As you see here, they indicate that medium and source is required, but I highly recommend doing a campaign name as well. And so you see here our campaign source, we can put in whatever information we want. The source is who sent the traffic. So they give an example of Google or a newsletter. I'm saying this is coming from our DDU site. 
Then also the medium, how is this happening? So this is a demo coming from the class right here. So we're putting that as a classroom demo. You could look at this as a CPC banner or email. And then finally, the campaign name is the name of the campaign you're running. I recommend making it as descriptive as possible, whether it's internal or something that's driven externally, so you know exactly what happened. Sometimes I repeat the source, so I'll say DU in there. Sometimes I might just go ahead and put the campaign name there if it's going to a site that only does a few campaigns. But the more specific you are here, the more likely you are to identify the success of your campaigns, which is really the whole point of enhancing your data with campaign tracking. And then once all is said and done, Google will build a URL for you. This URL will work in any browser, so there's no problems or challenges with how it gets generated. If you hit copy here, you can use that link immediately on any site that you want to for sharing. If you want to make it even shorter, you can shorten a link by connecting it with your Bitly account. And so that's how you create a campaign URL and get clean data into your GA4 account. Okay, now it's time to get more advanced with our tracking by setting up custom events in GA4. First, I'll start by mentioning that one of the biggest changes in GA4 is that the system uses an event-based model for tracking, which is different than the previous hit-based model. These events create a more lightweight data model for you to collect data without hogging bandwidth, but it also requires some additional setup to make sure your events appear in the interface. And this can be done by creating custom events, which I'll show you how to do now. But why is this important? Because without custom events, it's very difficult to measure your website conversions, which I'm gonna show you how to do in our final step. Okay, so now we are gonna create a custom event inside Google Analytics 4. So you hit the Create button, and you can find this under Configure and Events. So we're gonna hit Create Event, and we're gonna create one. You notice how I've already created one called Sign Up. We'll create a new one called Button Click. Now it is very important that you use something called Snake Case, which is all lowercase and a underscore to separate things. No spaces, no uppercase, no weird characters in order for it to work here. And there you go, so we have button click. Then you say you can either do it based on the event name, you can do it based on certain parameters that are in place. You can say the parameter is, let's just say, content type equals button, let's just say. If they click on that. Now just note that any parameter, any event name that you're using to create your event would have had to have been done previously. And the good news is that if you have enhanced measurement enabled, then you can have events around page views and there will be some parameters you can draw from in order to create your event. And when all is said and done and you have the right parameters matched and the right events happening, then you can hit create and you will have your new event in place. And again, this is something that's very important if you eventually want to track conversions on your site. Our fifth and final implementation item is to mark custom events that you've set up as a conversion in the GA4 interface. Setting up conversions allows you to track outcomes for your efforts back to the traffic source that you drove to your site, as well as user activity. It's how you measure the success of your search campaigns. But there's a quirk as to how this all works, so I want to make sure you're aware of that before we set up conversions. The quirk? It takes a full day for your custom events to show up in GA4 and so you should plan on setting up conversions the day after you set up your event. Now, of course, since we have the magic of editing, I'm gonna go through and show you how to set up a conversion from an existing custom event that I set up a few days ago. Okay, so here we are in our events report, and notice that there's an event called sign up, and I have marked it as a conversion. The cool thing about GA4 is that any event that is tracked or that's showing up in your events area it's very easy to mark it as a conversion. You can simply check this little toggle here and it will make it a conversion and it will make every single time that this event happened listed as a conversion for your site. So it's really nice and easy to do once you have your custom event created. And so the biggest step here, the most challenging part of these five things that you need to do with GA4 is setting up the custom event so you can have this conversion working. But even though that's challenging, a lot of times it's actually pretty straightforward because it's already set up for you in the enhanced measurement. So the cool thing is without adding any code to our site, without doing any kind of complicated tracking, we can set up something to track things like signups, our conversion pages, and so on using the methods outlined here. And that's why I love the simplicity of GA4 because for many people, they can start tracking conversions without actually having to do any code modifications to their site. And you can get the code on your site pretty easily using the integrations that Google recommends with different content management systems, plugins, or even Google Tag Manager. 
Okay, so there you have it. These are the five actions that I recommend every Google Analytics account take to get the most out of GA4. And while some of these techniques will take planning in advance, you'll be forever grateful that you set them up to accurately track the traffic and outcomes of your site. These items can be implemented in a matter of hours and will give you around 80% of the data that you need to find value in GA4. And if you get confused about how things work, you can always refer to this video to retrace the steps that you need to take. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about what you can do with GA4 and that you're already beginning to implement all that you've learned on your own account. Thank you for learning with me.